Father, we thank you for this, another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. Thank you, Lord, as we prepare to go from one year to the next, that you will provide us revelation, information, insight, that the Bible says that the Holy Spirit will reveal things to us concerning the future, and we just believe that right now. And so, Holy Ghost, I pray that you will, you will penetrate this stream and enter into every home, minister to every family, every individual. And I thank you, Lord, as a result of what they hear tonight, that nothing, nothing or no one will ever be able to change their mind concerning who you are. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. We give you all of the honor and all of the glory and all of the praise. It's in the matchless name of Jesus we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Praise God. Well, listen, I, I want to I take the opportunity tonight to say to you that the best is yet to come. And, you know, my picture is that your home it's warm, and the families gather together. The little churches are there together to hear a word from the Lord, to hear a word that will hope, hopefully govern your life for 2021. And so let's begin in Joel, Joel chapter 2, verse 21 through 27, and we'll start here. And tonight... I believe that God is going to show us in 2021 godly restoration. And that's what I want to talk to you about, godly restoration. I know that 2020 has been just, there are, there are really no words to describe it. And yet there is a type of restoration that comes from God that is unlike worldly restoration, godly restoration. What is that? And is there a difference? Is there a distinction between godly restoration and worldly restoration? Let's look at verse 21. And uh, this is Joel 2, verse 21, and I want to read through 27. Verse 21 says, Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice. For the Lord will do great things. Wow. In verse 22, he says, Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring, for the tree beareth her fruit, the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he hath given you the former rain moderately, or former anointing moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. Or in other words, he's going to cause the anointing of the former days and the anointing of the latter days to come down all at the same time. And the floor shall be full of wheat, and the fat shall overflow with wine and oil, and I will restore. Underline that. I will restore. I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm, the caterpillar, the palmer worm, my great armies which I sent among you. God says, I will restore. And you shall eat in plenty not in scarcity, and you shall be satisfied, not dissatisfied, and you will praise the name of the Lord your God that has dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and none else, and my people shall never be ashamed. Now, I want you to notice twice he said 
that my people will never be ashamed. You see, God is getting ready to do some things in our lives, glory to God, that will let us know that 2020 was not just a horrible year, a messed up year. For some, it was sad. For some, it was victorious. But God says, I'm getting ready to do something just to let you know that I'm God. It's not going to be because you deserve it. It's not going to be because you earned it. He says, I'm getting ready to do some things just to let you know that I'm God. And he says, I'll not have you walking around in shame. I'll, I'll not have you put to shame. I'm not going to have you put to shame and losing your house being put to shame and not being able to provide for your family and put to shame. He says, I won't let that happen. He will take care of you. So we're going to talk about restoration. We're going to talk about godly restoration. And you see here in Joel that God has committed, I will restore. And so there are some things that, that need restoration. There are some things in your life, things in all of our lives that need to be restored. Uh, now, that, that need, that restoration, things that have what does it mean when I say restoration? Things that have over time been allowed to slip into a state of neglect and despair. Things that have over time, maybe things that have, you know, over this past year have been allowed to slip into a state of neglect. Some things that throughout 2020 have allowed to, to come into a place of, of, of disrepair. When you talk about restoration, I'm talking about it, it's a condition of needing repair. There are things that need to be repaired from 2020. For example, maybe your prayer life is in need of restoration. Maybe your prayer life is in need of repair. Maybe there was some neglect where your prayer life was concerned. The attitude towards others that may need to be in repair attitude towards other people. Think about that now. There might need to be some restoration where that is concerned. Restoration in the area of your finances. There may need to be some restoration in the area of your faith. Restoration in the area of your physical body. Maybe your body was attacked. Maybe, maybe, you, maybe you had to go through corona or some other thing and, and, and it left some marks back there. And, but God, God wants to restore and, and he wants to make sure that whatever the condition that needs to be repaired, that, that that's going to happen. Maybe it's in the area of your peace, restoration where your peace is concerned, that you hadn't had peace in a while. Maybe it may be in the area of courage that you, you saw throughout the year that your courage was dwindling down. Or maybe it was a restoration needed where your confidence in God, maybe that kind of dwindled down a little bit and it needs to be repaired and it needs to be restored so that you can have ultimate confidence in God. Maybe there's restoration needed in your in the, in the in confidence in the word or maybe confidence in 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 his ministers maybe maybe for some you're saying i, I need to have uh, my confidence in in the ministry gifts restored confidence in the prophet and the and the evangelist and the pastors and the teachers and i i i need my confidence restored something happened 2020 i heard something that hurt me i heard something that disappointed me and i need restoration even where men and women of God are concerned. Maybe there's restoration needed in unity amongst the body of Christ. Maybe this past year caused a lot of separation, a lot of strife, a lot of division, and maybe it's time to believe God for some restoration where unity is concerned. You know, I'm reminded of this scripture in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1. I'll read it in the New Living Translation. And he says, so we must listen very carefully to the truth we have heard or we may drift away from it. In 2020, what areas in your life 
where you knew truth, you understood truth, you had a strong conviction, and you found yourself drifting away from it. What were some of those things that you let, you, you, you let slip in 2020 that are in need of restoration, that are in need of repair? You see, ladies and gentlemen, most people have come to understand restoration as the means to bring back to or to put back something to a former or original state. I, I thought that restoration was all about, you know, restoring to the original state. But listen to what I've learned. The definition is true where the unsaved world uh, uh, is concerned. Uh, the unsaved world, of course, in worldly restoration is all about restoring back to its original state. But this is incomplete when we refer to godly restoration. Now, I want to make sure I set this so you can see what we're talking about here. There's a difference between godly restoration versus worldly restoration. Worldly restoration is just simply bringing something back to its original state. But godly restoration is bringing something into a state where it would be even better than the original. See, God's not concerned about just bringing you back to the original state of a thing, the original place of the thing, or the original condition of a thing. God wants to bring you to a place where it's even better than what it was. He wants to get you to a place where it's better than the original state. Glory to God. And I'm telling you in the name of Jesus, as you sit here and hear this message, I want you to know that God is planning on bringing you to a place that is going to be better. He's the much more God. He's not going to bring you exactly where you were before all of this stuff happened in 2020. Honey, you're getting ready to go to another level. You're getting ready to go to another place. You're getting ready to pass the original state and come to a place that's much better, glory to God, than it was before. Amen. Let me give you an example. In Job chapter 42, uh, verse 10 and 12, first verse 10, he says, And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. He gave him twice as much as he had before. And then in verse 12, he says, So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. You don't see God restoring Job to the original state. God is restoring him past the original state, giving him something much better than it was before. Praise the Lord. So in verse 10, I want you to also notice if you go back to verse 10, he says, and the Lord turned the captivity of Job when? When he prayed for his friends. When he prayed for his friends. I want you to make a little note of this. Restoration begins with forgiveness. Restoration begins with forgiveness. I don't know what happened this past year. I don't know what some of you have gone through, but some of you may have to do like Job and go pray for your friends. Restoration begins with with forgiveness. Don't allow forgiveness to be a blessing blocker in your life. Don't allow forgiveness to be a wall to stop what God wants to bring into your life. Unforgiveness and strife can hinder restoration. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. And nobody wants to sit around and talk about, you know, why you're in strife. Nobody wants to sit around and, 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 and justify strife. Strife will, will hinder this restoration that God wants to do. God wants to take you much farther along the road than you've ever gone before in your life. Godly restoration says, I want to do more than what you, 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 you were originally dealt with. I want to do more than where you originally were. But he says, you got to deal with that unforgiveness. You got to deal with that strife. Don't let it be a blessing blocker in your life. In verse 12, notice Job received more than he had in the beginning. That's godly restoration. Job received more than he had in the beginning. Now, I, I prophesy this over you right now. You will receive more than what you had in the beginning. 
Whatever you had in the beginning of 2020, get ready. You will receive more than what you had in the beginning. You will have godly restoration. We're not trying to go back to where it used to be. It's going to be godly restoration. Oh, hallelujah. Let's look at some scriptures here. I just want to preach out of the Word because God getting ready to do some, some phenomenal things in your life. Do you actually think that God's going to let the devil get away with all of the stuff that happened in 2020? Absolutely no way. I mean, <laughs> he had the headlines for almost a year. I'm telling you, uh, in the midst of it, what some people don't know, God was doing some mighty things even in the midst of it. But God is now going to do some things. He's taken over the headlines. He's going to do some things that people are not going to even be able to figure out. There are going to be some things that you, you would think coming out of this, oh, everybody take a deep breath and, and oh, let's just get started. No, God is getting ready to do some phenomenal things in this earth. He's going to do it through believers and people that love him and people that believe in him. And I tell you, where they have dogged believers out and laughed at us and mocked at us, glory to God, our, our God of vindication is going to vindicate us. And there are going to be people that are going to say, listen, what do I need to be to be saved? Because the glory of the Lord is going to be so strong in your life and the things that you are doing because of this godly restoration. Amen. Now look at Proverbs chapter 6. I want to show you something here. The Bible says men do not despise a thief, doesn't despise a thief if he steals to satisfy his soul when he is hungry. But if he be found, if the thief be found, he shall restore sevenfold. He shall give all the substance of his house. Now, here's one thing you got to understand. Satan is a thief. The Bible makes it clear that Satan comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But it's important that you recognize that this past year, you, you got to locate the thief. You got to recognize that was the devil that did this. That was the devil that did that. When you start recognizing it was the devil that did that, you can make him restore sevenfold. I prophesy over your life tonight a sevenfold restoration. Hallelujah. Whatever it was in the beginning, multiplied times seven. Because we know who the thief was. We know God wasn't the one that sent coronavirus. We know that God wasn't the one that caused all these people to die of it. No, 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 no. We know you, Satan. We recognize you. You know how we say, we see you. We see you. Now we command and demand a sevenfold restoration. Let me show you again Job in the middle of this. In Job 42, Job 42, verse 6 and verse 11. Notice this. In Job 42, verse 6, he says, Wherefore, I abhor myself, and I repent in the dust and ashes. See, at first, Job thought it was God that was responsible for all this. At first, Job thought that was God doing all this, but thank God he changed his mind. He repented. And I pray that a lot of you will change your mind and repent. Wait a minute and say, that ain't God. Now, God can take a mess and use it to make a masterpiece, and God can mature people in the middle of a mess, but you got to know what came from God and what came from the devil. The thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Jesus says, I've come that you might have life and have it how? More abundantly. And then look at verse 11. He says, Then came there unto him all his brethren and all his sisters and all that they had, been of his acquaintance before, and notice the attitude, and they did eat bread with him in his house, and they, they bemoaned him and comforted him over all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. See, notice, they, they, they too thought, look at what the Lord did. Look at what the Lord did. I don't have time to teach you the whole thing, but you go back to the very beginning of Job, and you'll find out it was the fear that Job had in his life he was afraid, and that fear allowed Satan to come in on that platform of fear and go to work. And they thought, this, this is the evil that came from God. A lot of you think that, that that evil came from God, that God took my mother, that God took my sister, that God took my friend, that God took my job. And No, 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 repent. Change your mind. Change your mind. That's not God. There's a devil loose. 
and he wants to, to destroy your life. And when you recognize it was the devil and you repent of saying it was God, you get yourself ready. God can bring about that great recompense. He can bring about that great restoration. If you catch the thief, he has to restore sevenfold. Now watch this. Exodus chapter 22 and verse 1. Exodus 22 verse 1. Listen, I, I, you, you know I came here to feed you. I want you, I want you so ready for 2021. I want you so ready 2021. You'll recognize a lot of maturity that you have now gained as a result of going through 2020. Now look what he says here. Exodus 20. Uh, 2, verse 1, if a man shall steal an ox or a sheep and kill it or sell it, he shall restore five oxen for an ox and four sheep for a sheep. Look at the attitude here. The attitude here is never, now give me exactly what it was originally. No, the, the attitude here is there's more, not, not just what you had at the beginning, but now this is going gonna, gonna to cost you. <laughs> and I'm telling you right now, don't go into 2021 working real hard to try to get back where you were in the beginning. It's going to be more. It's going to be the God of the much more. It's going to be the much more God. The much more God is working on your behalf. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm preaching myself happy. Glory be to God. Now, let's get into something here. Joshua chapter 5 and, and verse 12. I purpose to share scripture with everything that I say because I want you to have something to meditate on throughout this upcoming year. Uh, Joshua chapter 5 and 12 gives us another illustration of something that's happening here. In verse 12, uh, look at this. He says, uh, and the manna ceased on the morrow after they had eaten the old corn of the land. They ate the old corn of the land. The manna has stopped. Neither have the children of Israel manna anymore. But what happened? But they did eat of the fruit of the land of Canaan that year. In other words, <laughs> they moved from the wilderness, and that year they ate from the promised land. Glory to God. They moved from the wilderness but that year they ate fruit from the promised land. They were not eating old corn anymore. What's, what's the word I want you to get out of this? Get ready to eat the fruit from the land. And, and Canaan was the promised land. So for you and I today, get ready to eat the fruit from the promises of God. What has God promised you? Get ready to eat fruit from it. This year, get ready to eat fruit from the promised land. Some of y'all been eating old corn. Hallelujah. But this year, you're going to eat the fruit from the promised land. What is it that God has promised you? You will eat of that, praise the Lord. I prophesy that. You will eat the fruit of the promised land. This year, you will eat the fruit of the promised land. So release your faith out there. In fact, right now, say, I will eat the fruit of God's promises. The fruit. This is, this is something born out of the seed. And the Word of God is seed. And you will eat the fruit from the promised land this year, you're no longer in the wilderness, praise God. You're no longer in the pandemic, praise God. You will eat the fruit from God's promises. And you know what you're going to see? You're going to see his glory as a result of that. Now, now look at this. I hadn't shared out of this book very much, but I want you to go to the book of Esther. I, I saw something here that really, really blessed me. Esther, uh, you know, as Christians, we have enemies coming against us all the time. Satan wants to destroy us. Satan wants to get us out of the way, man. Don't you understand that? There's a spiritual battle going on, uh, good and evil. Satan wants you gone. In fact, I think sometimes he don't care whether you go to heaven or hell. Just get out of his way. Watch this. He says in verse 1, Now in the twelfth month, that is the month of Adar, on the thirteenth day of the same, when the king's commandment and his decree drew near to be put in execution, in the day that the enemies of the Jews hoped to have power over them, though it was turned to contrary, 
that the Jews had rule over them that hated them. Now get a hold of what's going on. See, the enemies thought that they would have rule over the Jews. The Bible uses the word, but to the contrary. But instead of the enemies having rule over the Jews, God turned that thing around and the Jews ruled over their enemies. Oh my God, somebody shout turn around. I'm telling you in this upcoming year, what, what intends on ruling you, you will have rule over it. The God of the turnaround is visiting your house right now. Some of the enemies that have ruled you, some of the enemies that have conquered you, some of the enemies that have tried to have power over you, God is now going to flip this thing around and you're going to have power over your enemies. Praise God. You will overpower your enemies. I don't know what it is. It may be an enemy of debt. It may be an enemy of sickness. It may be an enemy of strife. It may be an enemy of worry. Whatever the enemy is, God is going to cause you to overpower your enemy instead of your enemies overpowering you. So get ready. What used to have power over you is no longer going to have it. On the contrary, God is turning that thing around. Man, you ought to be shouting wherever you are, glory to God. I'm about to tear something up myself. God is going to take what, what, what tried to be my enemy, what tried to have power over me. What is it that has power over you? What kind of lasciviousness are you stuck in? What type of addiction are you stuck in? And the thing's just been dogging you ragged. Get ready. A turnaround's getting ready to happen and you will overpower your enemies. Amen. You see, I'm trying to build, I'm trying to build uh, up your hope. I'm trying to build up your hope. I think one of the things I saw which greatly disturbed me in 2020 was hopelessness. And I want your hope, your hope is going to be restored. I want you to be hopeful. Why? Look at Zechariah chapter 9. I want to look at this in the King James and the New Living Translation. Zechariah chapter 9 and verse 12. I want you to be hopeful. Why? What can I look forward to by being hopeful? Well, in verse 12, he says, Turn you to the stronghold, you prisoners of hope. Underline that, prisoners of hope. What happens when you become a prisoner of hope? That, it, that, that regardless of all the things that have happened, all the things that you go through, we don't, I don't know. I will not pretend to know what you've gone through. And, and, and sometimes we, we talk as if we, we think we know what people have gone through. You have no idea what people have gone through. You don't have any idea what I've gone through. You don't have any idea what, what maybe the people that you know gone through. But is there an advantage to, regardless of what you go through, always have hope? Always have hope in the middle of a ditch. There's the power of, of hopefulness that rises up. Say out loud, I'm a prisoner of hope. And the scripture says, turn you to the stronghold, you prisoners of hope. Even today do I declare that I will render double unto thee. Stay hopeful. And look at this in the New Living Translation. Stay hopeful. Stay hopeful. Don't ever give up hope. Everything else can be gone. Don't you ever give up hope. He says in verse 12, come back to the place of safety. All you prisoners who still have hope, I promise this very day that I will repay two blessings for each of those troubles. Oh, glory to God. There is no way that God's not going to go to work on your behalf if you will remain a prisoner of hope. I declare that right now over your life. We're prisoners of hope. We will never be found hopeless. We have hope. Here's another reason why I'm trying to, to, to build hope into you tonight. If you look at Psalm 71, Psalm 71, verse 20 and 21, both in the King James and the New Living, and New Living Translation. Here's another reason that you need to remain hopeful. Notice what he says in verse 20 and 21. Thou which hast showed me great and sore troubles shall quicken me again, oh glory, and shall bring me up again from the depths of the earth. Thou shall increase my greatness 
and comfort me on every side. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy, if you'll remain a prisoner of hope. Now look at this in the New Living Translation. You have allowed me to suffer much hardship. Does that, that sound familiar? You allowed me to suffer much hardship. But you will restore me to life again, and you'll lift me up from the depths of the earth. See, God's, God allowed us to go through what we went through, but he will restore you again. You will be restored again to greater honor, not the honor you had before, and greater comfort. God will restore with godly restoration. And look at this, 1 Peter 5 and 10 in the NLT for the sake of, uh, of uh, our time. Psalms, uh, 1 Peter 5 and, and 10. Uh, this is so important. He said, in, the, in his kindness, God called you to share in his, he, in his eternal glory by means of Christ Jesus, in his kindness. Not because we deserved it, but because he was kind. Not because we, we worked for it, but because he was kind. Not because we positioned ourselves for it, but because he was kind. In his kindness, God called you to share in his eternal glory by means of Jesus Christ. So through Jesus Christ, we share in this glory, the manifested word, we share in it through Jesus Christ. So after you have suffered a little while, he will restore. He will restore, he will support, and he will strengthen you, and he will place you on a firm foundation. So you gotta understand what you've, come, what you've come out of and the promise, the promise, he will restore, he will strengthen, he will build you up and lift you up. The God of all grace who has called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. After that, you've suffered a while. He will restore. He will restore. Boy, that encourages me. Now, listen to this. Uh, God's promise of repairing what had decayed, including health, including joy, including people, you know that? You know the Bible is filled with promises where God says that whatever decayed and, and is in need of repair, whatever has decayed, what's decayed in your life? I, I, I want you to think about that. What has decayed in your life? Some people who were married are not married anymore. What has decayed in your life? Some people who had strong faith for God, it's not there anymore. What has decayed in your life. If it's your health, then there are promises for restoration where your health is concerned. Is it your joy? I'm telling you, I need you, I need you to shout tonight. I, I, need, I need you to let the joy of the Lord show up tonight to do some amazing things in your life. And maybe it's just people, people who have just really, really been going through God has made a promise to restore. And I thought it was so important for you to see these promises. So there, there are three things that I, I, I'm, I'm believing God for. And there are lots of them, but it major, I'm majoring on these three things, your health, your joy, and people. Your health, your joy, and people. Look at Jeremiah 30 and 17. What is the promise where your health is concerned? Has it decayed? You know, some say that, you know, if you ever had coronavirus, then it could affect your heart or, you know, leave some, some, some uh, signs that the virus was there. Not so, not you, not you, not you who believe in God. No, 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 no. It wouldn't be restoration if you got healed of the virus, but it left something behind. Absolutely not. And here's what God said he would do where your health is concerned. He says, for I will restore health unto thee. Glory to God, that's shouting ground. I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds. What kind of wounds have been left? Maybe there's some emotional wounds that have been left because of everything that everybody went through. I mean, there's a lot of emotional pain that, 
that folks suffered and people went through. And, and, and some of you may be going through it right now, but God says, I'll restore your health and I'll heal those wounds because they called thee an outcast. He says, I, he, look at what God said, because they, because they, you know, threw you away, because they said you were never going to be nothing, because they said you were an outcast. He says, I'm getting ready to show myself big in your life. I will, re I will restore your health. I will heal you of your wounds. And he says, because they called you an outcast, saying that this is Zion, whom no man seeketh after, I'm going to show out on your behalf. I'm going to show. When they, when, they, when they called you nothing, I'm going to show up and make, and make a, a something out of you. When they said that you were no good, when they said that you were never going to make it, and when they said that you're never going to be nothing, when they said that you'll never get back on your feet, when they said that you'll never get a job better than the one you had, he said, when they called you an outcast, I'm going to show up and I'm going to do just what they said was not going to happen. I'm going to heal you. I'm going to heal you, give you your health back. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to heal you of your wounds. And just because they said you were an outcast, I'm going to show up. I'm going to show up. I'm going to do something mighty so that you will know, as well as those who see it, will know that I am the almighty God. Number two, joy. Joy. Now, you've heard me teach on this in times past that joy is more than happiness. Joy comes from what you know. Happiness is based on your condition and how you feel, but joy comes from what you know. When, when the doctor says you're sick, but you know that by his stripes you're healed, you can have joy becoming because of what you know. And we know that the joy of the Lord is our strength. So Satan says, why don't I attack your strength? And he decides, well, this is how I'm going to attack your strength. I'm going to attack your joy. And if I can get you to let your joy go, then I can attack your strength. And if you're not strong, you're going to be weak. And if you're weak, then I'll be able to win. And I'm telling you right now, ladies and gentlemen, it, you got to get your joy back. You, you can't look at that as something that's insignificant. You have to understand how vital it is for a Christian to get their joy back. And you got to get your joy back. And I mean, you got to get your joy back right now. I know you're saying, oh, but I, don't f I feel sad because I'd rather be in the dome uh, uh, with you tonight and, and I just want everything to be this. No, 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 no. You got to learn how to just thank God for where you are. You got to, you know, there are a lot of people that didn't make it to 2021. There are a lot of people who didn't make it to 2021. There, there, there are empty seats around the dinner table. There are empty seats uh, in the church where, where people used to be. And, and you have got to you know, thank God. You got to find a reason to thank God. You got to find a reason to, to, to be joyful. You got to know that you know in your knower that God's got your back. Could have been dead, sleeping in your grave. You woke up this morning. You are here to listen to this message to get your joy back. And if you get your joy back, praise God, your joy is the fuse to your faith. And when you have joy, then your faith becomes explosive. When you have joy, the Satan cannot handle a Christian that walks in joy. And so get your joy back. Get your joy back tonight, praise God. I don't know what music you got to put on. I don't know what, what scripture you got to meditate on, but you get your joy back. You let the devil know I'm not going to let you have my joy in Jesus' name. And look what he says here in Psalms 51 verse 12. He said, restore unto me the joy of my salvation. I'm believing God for that for each of you, that the joy of your salvation is being restored. Okay, maybe you did some stupid stuff in the booth in the back in the corner of the, in the dark. Maybe during the pandemic, they're just a bunch of dumb decisions you made. But you know what? God says, I'll restore your joy. God said, I'll restore your joy. And then he says, and, and he says restore unto me the joy of my salvation. Uphold me with thy free spirit. God is working. We got to just trust him. We just, we just got to depend on him that God knows how to restore my joy. And then look at this. Number three, the promise of repairing something that's decayed. Maybe, maybe people were decayed. 
This is so important. I want you to read the scripture with me in Galatians chapter 6 and 1. Wow. And, and, and it hurts my heart when I see this. But listen, he says, brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Okay, so what he's saying here is, Maybe you know some brothers and sisters in the Lord who were overtaken in a fall. Maybe there was some, maybe they did some crazy stuff. Maybe things happened. God says, I want to use you to restore such a one in a spirit of meekness. I want to use you. Will you allow God to use you to bring restoration in the lives of people? Will, will you allow God to use you to say, Okay, listen, that was dumb, it was bad, but I still love you. I'm not going to let you go. We got to stop shaming people when they make mistakes. We got to stop beating people up and, and, and walking in self-righteousness when we see somebody making a mistake. What grieves the Holy Spirit is how we treat one another. We are Christians, and we got to learn how to treat one another. If a man be overtaken in a fall, see, be careful not to dog him out and shame him when he's overtaken in the fall, because one day you might be overtaken in a fall. And if you're overtaken in the fall, you want, you want somebody around you that's spiritual, not carnal, not jealous, not envious. You want somebody around you who is spiritual. You want somebody around you who can say, hey, man, I'm here. I want to restore you. I want to restore you uh, uh, in, in a spirit of meekness and, and love. I, I, and that's what I believe God wants to do. You know, restoration, God will use us in this, in this era of restoration. You just don't know what your text may do. Uh, even tonight, you know, texting somebody and saying, Happy New Year. You, you just don't know what, you know, what a phone call might do, a card, a concern, something that says that you're being thought about, that you're you're cared about, that you are loved. And don't let envy and jealousy cause you to be mean and outrageous and slanderous with other people in some cases you don't even know. Take the opportunity to allow God to use you to bring about restoration in the lives of people. There are lots of people that are ready to be restored. There are people, that are, there are people today that are more open to God than ever before because of what we've just gone through. And you can be the light of the world. You can be the instrument that God will use to bring a blessing. You know what a blessing is? A blessing is, is, is literally when you become a tool by which God can flow his favor through you into somebody else's life, preventing misfortune in their life. Are you willing to be that blessing? Are you willing to live a life that pleases God? Or are you still trying to live a life that brings pleasure to yourself? I believe in 2021, you are going to live this life that will bring pleasure to God. Amen? Now, I want to share a few more scriptures with you, and I, I believe this is going to bless you because, you know, I, this is not the end of the sermon, but I, I do want to put this in your heart. Jeremiah chapter 51, 56 in the, in the New Living Translation, we have a God who will repay. He will recompense. He will restore. And in Jeremiah 51 and 56, he says, Destroying armies come against Babylon. Her mighty men are captured, and their weapons break in their hands. For the Lord is a God who gives just punishment. He always repays in full. I want you to look at that last line. He always repays in full. God always repays in full. It's not if he will, but he always repays in full. And then 1 Samuel chapter 30, and verses 8 and verse 18, look what he says here. Then David asked the Lord, should I chase after this band of raiders? See, David and a few of his men were gone. And somebody showed up and kidnapped his family and stole his stuff. And David, you know, went before God. That's the thing you do when crazy things happen. That's the thing you do when tragedy happens. And David asked the Lord, should I chase after this band of raiders? Will I catch them? And the Lord told him, yes, go after them. 
you will surely recover everything that was taken from you. David got back everything the Amalekites had taken and he rescued his two wives. You know, I believe that there are some things that have been stolen from you. I believe that the enemies have raided your life, raided your home, raided your relationships. And you may be asking, shall I go after them? And, and I believe the Lord is saying yes, and you will recover all. You will recover all. And then finally tonight, Psalms 30 and 5. Psalms 30 and 5. Praise God. For his anger endureth but for a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. I said joy cometh in the morning. Now, it may not come tomorrow morning, but joy cometh. Joy cometh in the morning. Some of you have been weeping throughout this whole year, but joy cometh. Joy cometh. The morning is here, praise the Lord. It's time for you to understand that the morning is here and that joy is here. And it's time for you to lift your hands up. You do what you got to do. You, you cry, you pray, you do what you have to do. But I want you to know, ladies and gentlemen, this thing's over. Somebody said, well, that ain't what the news say. I, I, I'm not looking at, looking at the news say, I, this is over in the name of Jesus. And your morning is here, praise God. And since your morning is here, this is the day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be exceedingly glad in it because God is good and he's worthy to be praised. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Give him the glory. Give him the praise. Hallelujah. Lift your hands up and thank him for who he is. Thank him for what he's done. Thank him for what he will do. Thank God for being God all by himself. I don't need God to be who I am. Hallelujah. I, excuse me. I need God to be who I am, but God doesn't need me to be who he is. I need God to be who I am, but God doesn't need me to be who he is. Cause, so I say, Father, I need you. I say, Father, I need you. I got to have you. And I, I, I release this anointing in your life right now. I release restoration in your life right now. I release the glory of the Lord in your life right now. I release godly restoration in your family, in your life right now. Godly restoration. You're not going back to the original, but you're going to go to much more. The God of the much more is visiting your house. Get ready. 2021 will be a time of recompense. It will be a time of restoration. It will be a time where you'll look and say, my God, what is this? And you will respond, this is the Lord's doing, and it's marvelous in our eyes. Your eyes are about to be blown away because of the work that God is about to do in these last days. Now, wherever you are, I need you to lift your hands up. Your family, y'all might be in your Christmas PJs tonight. I need you to lift your hands up. I need you to lift your hands up, and I need you to just take time to just worship God. It just right, right now, don't think about anything that you want God to do for you. Think about everything that God has already done for you. Think about what he's already done. Just a moment of appreciation. Just a moment of thanksgiving. Just a moment that says, God, I give you praise. You are his majesty, the king. You are the almighty one. You're the prince of peace. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for delivering me out of 2020. Thank you, Lord, that I'm alive and well. Thank you, Lord, that you are a shield about me. You're the glory and the lifter up of my head. Thank you, Lord, that all year I've been Psalms 91 equipped. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your exceeding loving kindness. Oh, I give you praise. You are my great Jehovah. 
Who is like unto thee, O God? Who can deliver like you? Who can set free like you? Nobody. For you are his majesty, the king. And we worship you. We worship you, Jesus. Now, if you're here and you say, I'm not born again, but I do not want to go into 2021 without Jesus. I don't blame you, man. I don't see how people are going to make it without Jesus. I don't see how people, I, 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 you got to have Jesus. And I want to introduce him to you right now. I want to introduce him to you right now. If you'll pray this simple prayer with me, Jesus will come into your life. Let's pray. Say this after me. Father, I realize that I'm a sinner, but right now I repent of all my sins. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that he died and was raised from the dead and is seated on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. I believe that Jesus has forgiven me of all of my sins. And so right now, Father, I pray Jesus come into my life, sit on the throne of my heart, be my Lord and my Savior. And I confess by faith that I am saved. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer with me, first of all, congratulations. Welcome to the family of God. But I'd like for you to, if you would, just text the keyword, I'm saved, that's one word, to 51555. Now, if you'll do that, I'll provide uh, you with a free gift, an e-book that'll help you in your walk. Just provide your name and your email address, and we'll get it to you. And again, welcome to the family of God. And if you just got saved, if you could, go to the comment section and just say, I just got saved. Go to the comment section and say, I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. And world changers, let's rejoice with them and welcome them into the family of God. Amen. Well, we're, we're, we're getting close to our countdown. Don't go anywhere. We're going to have a countdown into 2021. But before we do that, let's, let's worship God. I mean, let's really worship him with our gifts. I, I, I cannot get off my mind in, in Book of Matthew, the Magi, they finally located Jesus, who was probably around two. The Bible says when they saw him, they fell to, they, they fell to their knees, reaching into the treasury and began to worship him. I believe our giving is a worship. I believe that our giving completes our worship. I, I believe that something happens. Our, our giving is a reflex of, of our love for God. It, our, our, our giving is, it puts us in remembrance of what God has already done for us. Why don't you be a part of this tonight? <laughs> Maybe you haven't given through the technology not one time this year, and you say, you know what, I just want to start everything off right. If you're giving through the use of the text technology, you can text world changers, space, and then the amount to 74483. If you'd like to dial that number on your screen, they'll be glad to help you out, 866-477-7683. Or you can go to our website, worldchangerschurch.org, worldchangers.org, and you can give, use your PayPal if you're watching from overseas. And if you'd like to mail to 2500 Burdett Road, College Park, Georgia, 30349, you can do it right there as well. Whatever you do, complete your worship. Complete your worship. And I believe that worship is incomplete without the giving of gifts. Let's give to the Lord, for he is worthy, worthy to be praised. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Hey guys, it's almost New Year's Eve. It's almost 2021. Now, here's what I want you to do. We're getting ready to enter into our countdown. I want you to see the significance of this. You're leaving 2020. Oh, you'll never forget 2020. And you're moving into 2021. 
You're moving into a time of restoration. You're moving into a time where God's Word promised that He's not taking you back to the original state. He's going to make it much more. A much more God is getting ready to show up in your life. Now, people wonder, why do we do this? Why do we say these, these things? Because expectation is the breeding ground for miracles. So stretch your neck out and expect for God to do something. Make your mind up that I'm not going to be the same as I was in 2020. I'm not going to think the same way I thought in 2020. I'm not going to act the same way I acted in 2020. Oh, don't get me to hoop in here, boy. I mean, when you think about what God has actually delivered you out of, and when you think about what you're getting ready to leave, it's not going to be more of the same in 2021. The God of recompense has visited your house, and He will restore. So 2021 is standing on that promise. So as we get ready for the countdown, you know, get your kids, get your wife, let's get, let's get ready. We're going to go into this together. We may not be in the building, but we are together. We are world changers, and together we are about to experience this virtual New Year's Eve countdown as we go into the year of 2021. Are you ready? Get yourselves together. Get, get your house together. Get, 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 get the kids together. Uh, uh, the husband and wife, get, get ready to get that kiss together. Pucker up, praise God. Thank God he delivered us out of 2020. Thank God that we made it out of the COVID-19. Thank God we made some progress in inequality. Thank God the elections and everything's settled and, 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 and things are going to move forward. Thank God for a vaccine for some that will be able to, 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 to take it and, and see some better things happen. Thank God for your new job. Thank God for your new house. Thank God for your new health. Thank God for your new situations. Thank God that recompense is all around your life. The restoration of God is all around your life. Come on, let's count down right now. Come on, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Happy New Year's, everybody. Welcome to 2021. It's 2021 and we rejoice in the Lord. Happy New Year, world changers. Happy New Year, wherever you may be. We are in 2021. Welcome to the year of restoration, godly restoration. In Jesus' name, rejoice, rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. All right, y'all. 